Hallelujah. We greet the beloved church with the peace of the Lord in reference to the word of the Lord. Let's stand up, please. The Holy Bible is getting Matthew. We're going to read Matthew chapter 13. Let's uh, continue the parables. The parable at the sower. Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. Verse 45 and 46. Matthew 13, verse 45. says again the king king of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it we adore the lord for your grace We ask, Lord, that you, in the word, you can bless us. We pray in this holy name in Jesus. Please be seated. The parables. There are seven parables. The mustard, the and these first four parables that I just said, they were, they were driven to a people, to the crowd, when Jesus left the housing and sits next to the sea. Jesus was with his dis dis disciples, and on the, and in his, and, and in his first parable, The people didn't understand what Jesus was saying, not even the dis disciples. That was a that was the fulfillment of a prophecy that that says, and all that said Jesus through parables. So in the first four parables was said from said by Jesus to a crowd that was next to the sea. And that represents, he's talking about the world, uh, the humanity, he's talking about Israel. And after this fourth parable, Jesus, he leaves the crowd in the, in the sea and he will return to his house. And when, he, and when he returns to his house, he does not return by himself. He returns with his disciples, with, with his church, we can say. The first four parables, he talks to the world. There are the three parables. Jesus talks exclusively to the church. He is home with his disciples. He is in communion. They are together. And before Jesus starts to talk about the fifth parable, he explains, he talks about the parable. The weed in the shaft. Before the, the, the parable of the weed in the shaft, Maybe, maybe the word did not notice that the crowd, the disciples didn't notice that. But that parable talk about a judge, judgment. The we and the and the shaft. Why the judge? Because on that parable, God, 
he sent his angel to to do a to, to separate to do a separation, and this separation, this separation was to take the the, the sons of the king to a to, to a place, and the sons of the bad people to another place, and the parable says. And in order, and you're going to see the difference of those served Jesus and those who serve the God. And after th the Lord talks about that parable, to ex after He explains this, and s and to see and to show that there was a judge and a and a destiny for those, and then He starts to reveal the mystery to the church. And there's a verse on the and the Bible in Colonel sense that talks about that mystery, the mystery of those who were hiding in all the in all the generations and there was now was manifested by the saints which God wanted to make them known what are the rich what what the rich richness of the of the heaven and the hope for eternity. And now he starts from the fifth parable about the treasure, hidden treasure in the field. No. To reveal all his projects, all the projects of Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, to the church. That's why he uses the expressions the, the kingdom of heaven is, is similar. And then, the, and then the parable of the hidden treasure talks about a man, one man, <laughs> the king of heaven is similar to a hidden treasure in a field. And for the pleasure, he, he's, he goes and sells that field. A man is a indefinite article, as we know in Portuguese. It's related. It's related to an article, an old. Uh, but he's talk, talking about each man, any man, any person, any person that that encounters in the, f in the field that treasure. And any person that that w that when encountered that treasure in the field, that understands that that treasure, like the like the song is saying, this treasure is greater and more valuable than everything that he possesses. What does he do? He ta he he takes a decision. And what decision is that? To sell everything that he has. To, s to buy the field, not the treasure. He buys the field. But he buys the field because of the treasure that is there. And when we remember that Martin Luther, it was the religiousness. And when he gets the Bible, which is the field, he finds inside in the word of God, he finds inside the Bible the, the, the living word, the revealed word, like we said, or the word where reveals Jesus as this great treasure. And interesting that when he, he when he buys it, he possesses that field, and and taking possession that that becomes his prop property. So you buy a field and you get a treasure. And when you start to explore this field. to explore the treasure that is in the field, 
which is not the word of the life, which is the living word, the revealed word. When you start to explore that, to look at inside that treasure, you start to seek, to, to look for, you find out now this pearl of great value, which is the Jesus, the most expensive and the rare that's in that treasure. But for you to acquire, to acquire this treasure, you need to buy the field. And for you to buy the field, there is a price. There's a price to be paid. The salvation, the salvation is, does not have a price. It's free because from the grace you'll be saved because it's, it's a gift of God because from, for, for the grace will be saved. But the field has a price. And the price of field is for you to sell everything that you have. It's ch exchange all your values, all the values you have here on and and earth for the values that are up in the on heaven. So if you don't buy the field, if you don't sell everything that you have, you're not going to buy the field. So it's a question of a choice. It's a question of a decision. That man understood, comprehended. The Holy Spirit probably touched his head, revealed his heart, revealing the mystery, the treasure that was in that field. It was more value, valuable than everything he possesses. Brethren, we accept the Jesus. And when we accept Jesus, which is the purchase of this field, this place, he changes completely our life. The word of God says that those who are in Christ, then will be a new, it will be a new creature and everything will be new. So from the moment that you exchange that, that you buy this field, that you you give away everything that you have or everything that you think that's valuable. The thing that you possess during your life. When you find this treasure, it's like David. When he presented himself before Jesus, like he said, he's, in, he's needed. And he, because what he has compared to the treasure is insignificant. What you have compared to the project of the Lord is insignificant. And the man understood that. And then he does his choice and he buys it. And interesting that some, one time the disciples of Jesus, they asked Jesus, we left everything to follow you. What are we going to gain with that? And Jesus said, those who leave, those who had left house, brethren, brothers, sisters, parents, land for the love of my name will get a hundred times more than what you left in, thi in this life. So when you buy this field, when you take possession of this blessing that Lord has for you, that the God has for you, this great treasure that's the salvation of your soul, you start to, en to enjoy this hundred times. This hundred times more than what you gave is in this life. It should be all benefits, all the blessings, the helps, the cares, the cures, the deliverance, the doors that the Lord opens to your life from the moment that you take that decision. My brethren, one house, one heart, cure, deliverance, university, citizenship, green card, a, a boat, a field, prosperity in your professional life, material life, it's good. It is good. Money in your pocket is good. But, but for this life only, 
we're miserable. If we, oh, the project of Lord is way bigger than that. That's why now that the man, man comprehended the parable, the hidden treasure. Now that this treasure, that you and I found it, and it's more than all the best that the Lord will give us here in this earth, it's the salvation of our soul. We continue to seek, seek for this treasure where the Holy Spirit starts to guide us, direct us, to show us the, the, the well, the, which is the pearl of great value, which is the salvation of our souls through Jesus. And interesting that one man, a merchant that's looking for good pearls, and found one pearl of great value, he sold everything he had and he bought it. Thank you. Interesting that we are when we take the parable of the treasure. It's this parable is all in the present tense. It's, it says that. Go, go, and then he'll go. I'll go, he goes, they will go, he sells, I sell, he sells, and also in the present tense. Everything, everything that you have, the have verb is in the present tense. And after that, and if you buy me, I buy, he buys it, it's in the present tense. So in the moment that the man finds out this treasure, when he has an encounter with Jesus, when Jesus reveals to him through the Holy Spirit that he, he needs to take a decision, and the decision that he took, he didn't take three days later, one week later, one e week or one year, because if you hear, so when he heard the voice of Jesus, he had experience a salvation experience. When he found the field of his interests, this big treasure that was hidden, this treasure that was revealed to him, he took a decision in that exact moment. In the present tense, he decided right there at the moment to buy that field and take possession of the blessing that God has for his life. The salvation is today, it's for now. It's in this exact moment that God is revealing into our lives. So brethren, so when he does that, when he takes that decision, we can say that he does, he does the deal of his life because it, it relates to a deal. A disciple of Jesus, all of them had their own business. Peter, Andrew, Tiago, John, they were fishermen. When they had an encounter with Jesus, when Jesus revealed to them, they left the nets, they left the boats, they left their fathers, Matthew, left left the customs he was a tax collector so they left their business the business of this life for now to participate to participate in a different and another business the business of the heaven this business is the business of my life Facebook is the thing of my life. It's the thing for this life. Now for the, for the, for the thing that God has for you, for your soul, it's the thing of the reign of, of the heaven. And there's no riches that can break that, that cannot be compared. The treasures that will be celestial, 
So, brethren, the word says that the, the reign of heaven is the similar to the businessman and the time of Jesus. The pearls, they have great value. Today, more, they don't have as much value as they had in before. But at that time, they were in great value. And Jesus wanted to show to his church, to his disciples, the great value, the reign of God. We know that pearl comes from the shelf, like a shelf in a sea. The pearl comes, an oyster. And when you look at the oyster, the shelf, you don't give anything to it. It's like the reign of God. It does not come with appearance, exterior appearance. And Jesus says that. Looks. And even Isaiah's. Like a root of a dry, like a dry land. And the way that the pearl forms itself inside the oyster. It's an organ, it's a parasite. It's a strange particle. It, it goes inside the oyster. Uh, he's, he's, he's looking at it because he searched that. So the oyster, this partic particle, this parasite, becomes that pearl. So when Isaiah 53, he was, he was wounded by our iniquities and for this we will cure the oyster is apparently ugly from outside and many times when the people look at the gospel of Jesus they, they, they think they are ugly but when the oyster opens up the oyster reveals the mystery that's inside and that reveals the great the great beauty that was the pearl that was generated inside her. So when Jesus reveals to the man's life, he looks inside that and sees the effort, the sacrifice. He sees the great love that the God gave to the man's life. All the work that Jesus D has done to avoid the death and the sin from the human being. And when you recognize that, that what I say, that a hundred times that does the value does not exist anymore. Now it's not the green car, it's not the house, it's not the house. Now the thing is, it's the eternity. Amen. And the interesting about the oyster or the pearl, it's not like the other metals, the precious gems. It's not like a special precious gem. You have to clean, you have to cut it, polish. There's a, a lot of work involved for that, that beauty of that gem, precious gem, can be admired. Or a metal, like a gold on the, on the ground, you need to, f you need to heat up the, the gold so you can work on the gold to give him appearance. The pearl is different. The pearl, when it comes out of the oyster, in the case of this, she comes out perfectly. Doesn't need polish. Doesn't need to lapidate. It comes out perfect, ready. And, and when the man notes, notice the perfection of the work of Lord, the perfection of the project of God in your life, he's going to understand one thing, that nothing needs to be taken and not needs to be added. The project 
of God is perfect for me, for all the people. So the man, the businessman, wanted to, to. It's all that man that's in this business. Those that acquire. All those that every day has studied, that has, has sick, the living word by the Holy Spirit, the great project of salvation through Jesus. Interesting that this man he was not seeking pearls of great value, but he was seeking he was seeking two pearls. If you take this field, which is the Bible, and the word of life, which is the Bible, you're going to find good pearls. Men, no notable men, extraordinary. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Peter, Paul, Silas, Barnabé, Andrew, Tiago, Matthew, and so forth. Good pearls. And this man was seeking for two pearls. Sometimes in the societies, we find extraordinary men. They are good pearls. People that people that have done a lot for the society, for the religion, for the man. And sometimes we seek through this good pearl people, through these people, the work of them, the testimony, the service that have done, even for the reign of God, like was said in the seminar yesterday. Like, but brethren, the salvation does not come from the work, but from the faith of Jesus Christ. The word says that to enter in the reign of heaven, the man does not need good pearls. He does not need to imitate it another man to plead for another man doesn't need that the man needs to be a mediator an intercessor you don't need the salvation from another from another man you don't need a lot of salvation or saviors in my area the the fishermen they went to the to the deep sea and then there was a storm and the boat flipped and there was one there was one Christian and the other ones were not Christian and that storm started to get stronger difficult and one and they were calling all the pearls all the saints and, and and the more he called the more difficult was and the and the Christian guy was quiet and then, the, and then when they saw that the people, you know, things were going to be complicated, now that you call all the saints, I'm going to call one name only. And this one that I'm going to call will help us. And then he plead for the blood of Jesus. The problem was resolved. One of the people that were in the boat, one of the person that was in the boat, that were calling all those pearls, all the saint names. Today is a pastor in our church. Wow. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. So, brother, you don't need a lot of pearls. You need one pearl. You don't need a lot of saviors. You need one savior. You don't have to trust in any man. Because to trust in a man, it's 
bad are those men who believe in those men, in, in the man. It's, it's written in the Bible. What the man needs to do is, is to do this exchange, is to buy that. And everything that he possesses and recognize that Jesus is, in, is sufficient for your life. Interesting then when he says that he finds the pearl of great value, the first word he says it goes. He goes. But here he does not go. He, but here he went. So, so you don't need to go because you have already gone. And interesting is he did not sell. He doesn't sell in the present. He already sold it in the past. He didn't have it anymore. You understand? The first one he goes. Where does he go? He goes and takes a decision. He goes and enters in this new way. Sacred from the from Jesus. The first one he sells it in the present tense. The first one, he has it. He possesses it. And then the first one, he buys it. Now everything is different. Now he does not go. He already went. He already took a decision. You only find out about the pearl when you already took that decision. If I had taken that decision back then to accept Jesus as my only sufficient Savior, if, if back then I sold everything, I understood that nothing here matters more than the salvation of Jesus. This pearl reveals to me. I take possession of that, the salvation. Hallelujah. Now he has already gone. What's gone is gone. It's not anymore. What I used to have, but don't have it anymore. It's written. And now I don't need to buy it. I have already bought it. I have already took that decision, taken that decision. I, I spoke about the disciples of Jesus. The disciples of Jesus went to fish another time. It's, it looks like a fisherman's, a fisherman's tale, but it's, it's true. It's in the Bible. They went to fish. And they, and, they fi and they were fishing during all night, and they didn't catch anything. In the morning, they met Jesus. And Jesus said, go back there. Throw the net to your right. And Peter said, but... Peter said, we worked all night, we didn't we get anything. But you, to your word, we're going to throw the, the net to your right. And when they threw the net to the right, you know what happened. He, he, they, they got a great quantity of fish, fish that will never end. Many, many fish. The Bible says they had to take another boat to help it because it's a lot of, a lot of fishes. Abundantly, extraordinary quantity. So they take their fishes to the to the shore. You know what that was the decision of the disciples. They left everything, and then they look all that many fishes. They look at Jesus and said, "They changed everything to Jesus." Amen. Salvation is that. It's to change everything for Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you an example, a more practical, practical example. So you play the lotto. You play and you didn't win. God is not going to do that, but it's just a hypothetical. He reveals you the, na the numbers. You go play and then you win $500 million. $500 million in one side, Jesus on the other side. Which one do you choose? That's the decision. 
Hallelujah. Glory. You have to leave everything to stay with Jesus. Jesus is this pearl, this $500 million. It's going to make you rich in this life. But Jesus is going to, it's going to make a difference in your whole eternity. The salvation is greater than everything that exists. The salvation of your soul has an extraordinary price. The Bible says that the human resources, because your soul is very expensive. And Jesus paid a high price for it. And Jesus is this pearl of great value. That's the price that was paid in the cross when he loved you and me and each one of us. Then he went, sold everything, everything that he had. I have sold everything. I have nothing. Glory, Jesus. Because now I bought a treasure in heaven. I have a house in, it, in the eternity because where there is your treasure, because your heart will be there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is this wonderful pearl with great value, rare and very expensive, precious, and that you don't do, you need to do anything because he had provided everything before the beginning of the world. Since the since the creation of the world, he had he already planned all this salvation for you, for our life. And this is what he was telling his church. If you observe, all the parables are short, short parables and rela related to the other ones because they sold everything. Because that day nobody needs to ask me. The Holy Spirit will reveal everything Jesus says about it. And today is, is what we live in next to the, our Savior Jesus Christ. Next to the last parable. Because the last parable is the rapture. To tell you this, the brother, the brother, it's the parable. The, the net is the rapture. So before the last parable, we have a choice. Sell everything to Jesus. Because in the last parable, the one who's going to choose is Jesus. The good and the bad. Like the the parable of the of the wheat and the bash like each one of us because it's now today in this exact moment if you have not bought the field buy it if you have not so if you not leave your values because the celestial values are way bigger bigger than what you you can enjoy the salvation of your soul not no pearl, no pearl can buy it, but only the pearl of great value had bought it, had bought your salvation through the sacrifice of the cross. Amen. Hallelujah.
word of glorification, Lord. We adore your name, Lord. We bless your name. Because you chose our lives to be dependent of you, Lord. Because there's nothing better than to be dependent of you, Lord. To be each day, to be before you, Lord. Because you are the one that can always, you are the one that love our lives. To take our lives in your hands and take us to this wonderful way, which is the eternity, Lord. We, we bless your name, Lord, for this wonderful word that you prepare for each one of us tonight, Lord. That word that spoke profoundly into our hearts, which is good to hear your voice, to, to speak to us. How good it is to feel your presence, Lord. We, we praise the Lord. Because we love you, Lord, with all our hearts. Because you're the best, the, the greatest. We're privileged to have you in our lives. How good it is to feel your care, your love that you have for all of us. How how good it is to be in your presence, Lord. We don't have enough words to thank you, Lord, tonight. But you want us to, to render all our gratitude for everything that you, that you are for us. For everything that you've done to your people. Those to seek your face each day because there is no price, nothing more valuable to feel your care, to feel your true love, the true peace that only you can give us, Lord. And that's why we wanted to thank you, Lord, tonight for each heart that you moved to be here in your house, Lord, to receive this blessing, this wonderful blessing. We, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The show, the, the Lord show tonight. That the Lord was sent the angels in this place and brought a message for each one of us. The, the message is if you haven't gone, just go. And take these projects of salvation on your life. If you have gone, if you have sold everything, this this Jesus was announced. He's will, he will reveal each day extraordinarily in your life. You're gonna you're gonna know that it, it's your presence. It's my presence. It's your presence in the, it's a place in eternity that to be with God. Give everything, give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah.
Deus, bendizemos o teu santo nome. Ó oh, Pai, glorificamos, ó oh, Deus, a ti, porque, Senhor Deus, já depositamos tudo, Senhor Deus. Senhor Deus, a única coisa que nós queremos to have found this mystery for our salvation in Jesus Christ, for this pearl of, the, of great value. We ask, Lord, that today to glorify, Lord, with, with all your for all your sacrifice, we recognize your plan, your project for in our lives. We came here to praise you, Lord. Accept us, Lord, in your presence. Accept the service, the, the praise, that we can have a blessed week. We ask you, Lord, you bless and for the benefits in the holy name of Jesus. And in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit upon us for now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have uh, come to the uh, end of the service. Some uh, brethren in the Zoom can assist. The brethren can pray for you and help you in whatever needs. If anyone else would like some, uh, some assistance, please, with prayer, please let us know so we can pray for you. Amen. Yeah, we hope by the end of the year we'll have